Welcome to episode two of Bourbon and Blacksmithing. Y'all stay tuned. Watch Strom and I teach Claudia how to turn this yes. 10 cent piece of rusty pitted pipe into a bell. It's gonna be a great episode. Y'all stay tuned and see how we uh, work this miracle. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon. Tonight's special guest is Jameson Black Barrel. <laughs> I'm chopping. I'm just kidding. No, but tonight's uh, episode is sponsored by Santa Claus. That's who provided our bourbon tonight. Santa was very uh, kind and brought me a new bottle of Jameson Black Barrel. And then we also have Claudia here, who's to, uh, she's going to talk about tracks for us a little bit. Uh, I think that we should do the fun stuff and go ahead and crack this bottle open. I think to the begin interview with. would be better. You want to start with the interview first? No, no, no. I think the interview would be better. Oh, yes. Yeah. The interview, interview will be better after a little bit of this. So the Jameson. I, I'm like, we've been sitting here staring at this bottle for the last two hours. I'm ready to uh, get this open. No. I was trying to take the plastic off, but I decided that ah, heck with it. We'll be all right. talking about your oh, here you go all right y'all remember from the bourbon whisperer it's supposed to breathe in through your mouth okay it takes me a couple of times before I get all the flavor in there It's better than the Jameson Stout that we had. No, it's not better than Jameson no, Stout. I don't know. That Jameson Stout was pretty good. No, this is good. This, this Jameson's good. better than the Jameson I had in Dublin at Jameson. At Jameson? Yeah. Well, they don't want you to say that. <laughs> but it's still Jameson. It is. It's still Jameson. It's I still just Jameson. have to like this form of Jameson better than that form of Jameson. Uh -huh. and this is the black barrel. Yeah, this is the black barrel. Jameson black barrel. That's pretty good. I think it's a keeper. I think that is definitely a keeper. See, and that's why I had a short pour, because I finished mine real quick. You gonna save that for later? Yeah. You want to get you a to-go box, <laughs> a doggy bag, a sippy cup? You know, if you had one of those things like they're putting their COVID mask in. Put your... <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around and get your shot and juice. Uh, all right. So you're here to talk to us about track. So, track. track. Not T-R-A-C-K, but T-R-A-H-C. So what does the acronym track it stands for Texarkana Regional Arts and Humanities Council. And what that means is we have a fabulous art community in Texarkana. Okay. And uh, websites, track.org. You want to expand on an art community a little bit? A little me? art community? Well, yeah. What is What consists of the art community? Are we talking about a bunch of like hippie beatniks running around half naked? Or are we talking about art people? Or... What are we talking about here? When you I say art community, I have not. I, think a little bit of both. I don't know that I've seen the naked hippie beatniks, but I'll be looking for that. Yeah. Uh, what it means is that because of track, we have developed a really good art community with different mediums. So we have people that are really well known for classical art, oils, watercolors. Then we have people that with a lot of abstract 
we just have developed a really big community. Part of that's because TRAC has a fundraiser every year called Party with Picasso. So an artist like Jerome could work with a regular person like me and we would turn out a piece of art, metal sculpture or something. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now I got a lot out of the Party for the Picasso from the multimedia type stuff that I didn't think I would personally like, you know, you start adding, you know, I think of art as painting, yeah. I think of art as sculptures, and then when you start adding the, the different multimedias, I'm really pretty impressed with some of the the things that came out. Oh yeah. Some not so much, right. some, some pretty or pretty cool. So, you know, it's actually stretched my, what I would call my art Appreciation, your, your art ego. My, my art appreciation, <laughs> and so you know, so learning from track is where I've learned some different aspects of art. And some of the other things that track provides is they they provide lessons in the community, so you can sign up for classes and take blacksmithing yes, with Jerome. Classes. classes, there are classes available at track like blacksmithing. There are, and that's what got Jared started. Yeah, it is was what got me started a, in blacksmithing. A track blacksmithing class yeah so you could do you could do mosaics you could do pottery throwing you could do watercolors there are so many different mediums of classes that you could take and I, I think that's a great thing and personally what I know is that when an industry or a corporation starts looking at a community they start looking for what things does that community provide and part of it is do they provide the arts and we have symphony and we have the arts and, and other different aspects and those businesses look for that because they want to provide enough opportunities for their people. Okay. Now I know the track is associated with Women for the Arts which both of those have a lot to do with the Perot, is that correct or is it just one or the other? Because I know the Perot ties in a lot with track. Yeah. Now, when you say the Perot, the Perot Theater. We have to talk about the Perot Theater. We're, to, we're talking Texarkana, Texas, and Arkansas. I think so, that our eight subscribers probably know Well, our eight that. subscribers know that, but we're going to hope that people <laughs> beyond that at some point in time will watch this. I joined so, as many times as I could. <laughs> in, in Texarkana, we have the Perot Theater, which is a... When was, man, it was made. Gosh, it was built maybe in the 1920s or so. Exactly. It was, the texture kennel was very young. It started out, the first things on the stage were like vaudeville. And Jenny Lynn came and sang in texture kennel. Some really important people. I mean, it was the way that people were entertained. Yeah. So Ross Perot was very generous, gave a large donation to help restore the Perot Theater. The Perot Theater is owned by the city but it's managed by TRAC. And so they take care of the facility. They book the programs. And so TRAC brings in programs every year and you can uh, sign up for the series and you might have a stage play, a musical, you might have opera, you might have uh, a comedy, you might have a magician. And it's just a variety of different types of entertainment. Okay. Now what I didn't realize until maybe a couple years ago, that you could actually be a member of TRAC. I don't know why that didn't cross my mind, but I know that you could be a member of TRAC. So what are the benefits of actually being a member of TRAC? Being a member of TRAC allows you to be one of the first people to, to reserve your seats for the whole series if you buy a series set of tickets. And if you take a class, you like discount, Blacksmith, right? you get a discount. Okay. You can also rent the TRAC building, the Regional Arts Center, at a reduced price. Now, visiting the the regional arts building, the rack, is free, correct? And there's oh, always um, an art what? Uh, there are always show some sort on. of art exhibits Exhibit, going on. That's where I was. Oh, yeah, for. it might be somebody local. It might be a traveling exhibit, and it could be art or sculpture. It could be all sorts of different things. And then those are always free. So go in the building and just, one, look at the incredible architecture. It used to be the uh, courthouse mm -hmm. and it has the uh, big room was the courtroom and it's gorgeous. And you can have large different types of events there. Okay. And then look at the I just see in the elevator. 
Oh yeah, yeah. The, ele so the elevator cool. in, in the track building oh, copper. is it's impressive. Very, very impressive. It's beautiful. Yeah. It really All is. right. So if our viewers want to either join track or learn more about track, where do they need to go to get some more information? They can just Google Texarkana Regional Arts and Humanities Council, or the easiest thing is to just key in track p r a h c dot org. And okay. the website will come up and it'll give you all the benefits and how to join. Alright, and we will have a link to that website below the uh, description in the video. So, all Sounds right. great. Well, well, we know what we're drinking. What are we making tonight? I picked out a bell. Alright, well, I, well bell. I guess let's drink some bourbon and get to work making a bell tonight. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to heat this up in there. And the first step is we're going to neck this down. All right? Okay. So, all right. Our first step is we got to get a set of tongs that's going to hold this. We, we don't have to hold it all that well. So we're going to just grab a nice little set of flat jaw tongs that's going to grab right in here. Because mm -hmm. what we got to worry about, we got to worry about when we put this in the fire, heat's going to be coming back up out of this hole. So how yeah. do you keep your tongs from getting hot? You, you don't leave them in the fire. You don't leave them in the fire. The tongs okay. are going to come, and it will actually quench your tongs as we're working. Okay. Now, because if you had a longer piece of pipe and you weren't using tongs, you want to put a rag yeah. in the end of it. Otherwise, that heat comes up, and that rag will keep the end of the pipe from getting hot. And you so like then a you just work it. Yeah, no, yeah. It, yeah, you'll be drinking out of your bourbon glass like this because <laughs> you won't have any fingertips left. All right. All right. Now we're starting with what size pipe is this? Ooh, I want this. One. Want yeah. This? What size pipe is this, Jerome? Uh, inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Okay. And it was 12 inches long. Yeah. But we're actually but only going to use the first two inches say, of it. Yeah, we're only going to use about uh, three inches of this pipe. Okay. This is going to be one of those. Jerry talked me into, we're going to do some welding. We're gonna, I when know. I say welding, we're going to go over here Not to the MIG welding. welder and do some welding. Some real welding? Some real welding. Oh, yeah. I love that. Because you know, my All dad right. was a welder. Exactly. So, Jerry talked me into getting Cheating. away from the true hardcore blacksmithing, which is fine because this is how I normally do a lot of my blacksmithing. Okay. I, I'm not, you, I am to. not what you call a purist blacksmith. Mm -hmm. if, if I can jump over here and use my MIG welder and weld something together, I'll do that in a heartbeat. I'm all about the finished product. Right. I, I won't, you know, so. You want it to look like you want it to look. Exactly. So. Okay, so it's getting orange. It's getting, getting orange. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to actually come over here to our spring puller. Now, this is a spring you need to pick puller? a hammer. I was going to say, we have not done it. You need to pick a hammer that is nice and comfortable to you. We can take a nice little, little short handle kind of okay. hammer here that will work yeah, rather nicely. It's about hitting it hard. Right. It's about finesse. We want the hammer to do the work, right? Yeah, yes. we want the hammer okay. to do the work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you our first little progress. Okay. Fed. We're going to step over here to our spring puller. I'm going to actually, I'm going to use ah. the edge of my anvil as my distance. And I'm just going to slowly start tapping and turn. So what is flaking off? That is uh, oxid oxidization. Okay. As <laughs> exactly. Oh, but, uh, I'll ask you to get for an hour. There you go. It, That's what this is for. But if you notice, I'm steadily rolling okay. back here. Okay. See how it's starting to neck down? Uh -huh. I'm starting to hang. But like I said, I've used, I've used this right here as my 
my guide okay. as to where I want to be. It. But once we get a little puller started, you can see, you can just see that little neck down starting. So how long does it take for it to start cooling down and you've got to heat it up again? Okay, that's going to depend on the thickness of the metal and how much metal we've got going. This here is fairly thin, so it's going to cool down pretty quick. Okay. So, that once cold. it starts really? to get pretty cold right now, see how we're, we're losing our color? Uh -huh. So we're going to go back. We want a nice orange, high, high orange to almost a yellow heat. Kind of a Texas Exactly. So, but now we've got a nice little groove. We know where we want to be at. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let you take over from there. Well, it's just interesting to think about metal stretching. Well, one of the things well, about black, if you, if you really think about blacksmithing and moving hot iron, if you think about Plato. Yes. Okay. It, it, I mean, if you take a piece of Play-Doh and it's round and you squash it, everything's got to go somewhere. It's the same thing with metal. The okay. only difference between when we've got this iron hot, it's just like Play-Doh. It, if you hit here, something's going to move here, something's going to move there. And so we want to slowly stretch and slowly move stuff out. The only difference is we can't grab it with our hands and use our fingers to, to move it. So we got to use hands. Just once, right? Well, you can do it once, but yeah, it doesn't use it. You won't exactly. You're not going to go through it. gets hot and the impurities burn out of it, it becomes this. Yeah. That's what we're actually using that is, in the middle. Yeah, because this feels like it has a lot of air. It, it does. does. See, because look. Oh, wow. See the difference? Uh-huh. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. All right. So, but what happens is then our fire starts spreading where we don't want it and it should burn the coal off. So, it's just wasting that's, it. Yeah, it's just wasting it. Plus, this helps with the coke process. So, and, and it actually it helps in the coke process. It also helps concentrate the heat right into the middle of what right. it's Right, so I just put right. I mean, exactly. water just a little bit on the outside edges. All right, you about ready? I'm about ready. There you go. All right. All right. Ooh, that looks good. Does that look good? All right. Now, when we were we were practicing making the bill, yeah. I can't wait to get the camera table. Tell me. I was going to say, when we were practicing making the bells, I thought, I'm going to get in a big hurry and I'm going to muscle through this thing and I'm just going to hit it real hard and get this done in a hurry. And I actually ended up making more work for myself because as I hit it harder, it didn't, I, and I was turning it and everything, but it didn't round it even. It actually made flat sides and corners. And once you get a kink in this, if you have a corner, it's really hard to start working those corners out. Uh -huh. It's like Jerome said, whenever you hit it, that metal has to go somewhere. So when you hit it real hard, a, a whole lot of metal gets squished in one direction. And then you've got to move a whole lot of metal instead of like you're doing it even it out whereas you doing your even blows uh -huh. is keeping that the metal even all the way around 
So it does not do any good to get in here and just try to muscle through this thing. It, this is about finesse right now. Oh, cool. So that's why women can also do this. It's yes. not like you have to be some big old burly guy. No. So what we're going to do now, we're going to come in, we're going to actually clean off some of the scale that it's built up onto here. It gives us a little bit better view of what's going on. We can see uh, some of our hammer marks, what we get, really need to get cleaned off of here. That's amazing. So then what we're fixing to do, we're actually going to work on starting to flare out our end here. Okay. So we want it to flare out our end. We're going to take it on the horn of our anvil. We're going to hold up just a little bit and take about a half inch and just slowly. Again, this is not a fast forward kind of deal. This is nice and slow. Working this. The higher you hold this hand, the, the more flare you're going to get. And we're just sort of slowly working our way around. This isn't going to happen in one heat. We need to do two or three of these. Okay. So if you see how, see how we're working here, we're just doing that last little bit of it. We're just doing that last half inch okay. of material. We're going to flare it back out to get our our quail shape. So you can actually see you can actually see how it's starting how it's starting. And as we we do this two or three more times, it's going to really flare out and make it look good. up already yeah because that that lip is starting to get thinner uh-huh and as it gets thinner the thinner it gets Look. the faster it's going to cool down all right all right so look at that now tell me that doesn't look good i like that you definitely see a bell right? i can definitely see a bell it's funny turning a rusty piece of pie into a bell isn't it yeah i just would put that in the trash can <laughs> There's our half inch hole. All right, so now we're ready for a stem. What, we're we're going to make our zinger holder first, then we're going to weld it in there. Yeah, it's going to fit right into there. Once we clean a little slag out of the way. But yeah, but, it's, but yeah. it fits. It fits. Exactly. Okay, so we have round, we have tongs with a round, with a right. round grip. Yeah, we'll change yep. tongs. We, we swapped over. We went to a, a set of tongs that has a a V grip to it. Okay. This and, here will hold these. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right. Holds it pretty good and solid. Okay. So, let me interrupt for a second. This is nine inches of half inch round. Yeah, nine inches of half inch round. And we're gonna draw it out. Well, 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 well what we're gonna do, our, our first step to make our dinger holder is we're gonna actually take and do what they call half blows. Okay. All right. We're gonna hit half on the anvil, half off the anvil. Okay. All right. So what we're going to actually do is make a a little piece of metal yeah, off of here that so makes cool. a loop. Okay. So we're going to actually stand right back here. We're going to hold about a half inch of material on, okay. on our anvil. Then we're going to hit half on and half off. Okay. It's, and it's going to make a little shoulder on our on our material. Gotcha. Then we're going to do that. Then we're going to turn it a quarter turn. All right. And do it again. Okay. So with that, we isolate just a little bit of deal of material out here, and that's what we're going to end up making our loop that holds our dam. Yep. So I'm going to sit it right here. Yep, just like that. Let the shoulder yep. rest. 
Quarter turn. No. Quarter turn. Yeah. There it goes. Hammer. Come back quarter. Quarter turn. There you go. Because the only reason you got to do a quarter turn, because anything that's happening on one side is happening on the other. Okay. Keep the same up. And if it starts getting out of line, that's not a big deal. Because we'll, we we're going to get back yeah, in. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring it right back in. That's not okay. a problem. I think we're cold. So see, how, see how quick it's cooled down? It's real. Let's it's go back really fast. Fire. Right. It doesn't take long. No, it doesn't take long at all. Unlike the bell earlier. Whoop. Start sort of working it. Was that the bird? Yeah. Was that the bird? Start missing the big old ant. This is going to be our handle part. We, we've like got pretty. it all nice and rounded up. Everything mm -hmm. is looking good. We're good and tapered. What we're fixing to do now, we're going to actually step over to our MIG welder. Okay. And we're going to weld this into place. But what we're going to do is we're going to slide this up. This is what's going to hold our dinger. We're going to bring it up into the middle of our bell. Well, wait a minute. When do you put the clapper on the dinger? No. Okay. We're going to do our clapper separate. The, the clapper actually just has a big hook on it. Okay. So that way we can actually take it on and off and put it into the dinger when we're ready. Okay. All right. We hey, got Sadie. a camera hog coming in. Camera hog and there's, Sadie. There's Sadie. <laughs> there's Sadie. But uh, so our big deal is now is to get this centered up and tacked into place. And then we're going to weld it up and get ready to grind it down to make our handle. Okay. What you want to do. I know you got your, your one hand holding your hood up, but you really would want both hands on your gun. Okay. Because if you can create, I, I use my left hand to make a V. And that's a saddle. Because this doesn't get hot up here. No, this will not get hot. This is our saddle. And I want to be, I personally cannot hold a welding machine solid enough with What's just the first one rule hand. of welding? Get, get comfortable. comfortable. You want to get comfortable. You want to okay. get where you can get a hand here get you a, a V rest and go from there. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> right. Don't pull so, the trigger until you're pull. ready to go. Well, not a big deal. There okay. you go.
Okay, so we've got everything ground down, everything's looking good. We're ready to go ahead and start working on getting our curl and getting our anvil going. Okay. Or our, no, our anvil. anvil. This is still a bonus. That's the bourbon top. That's, That's the bourbon still a bonus. top. But we're going to start working this around. We're going to make a loop on the top. Okay. So, so we're going to actually start using our scroll tongs. Okay. We're going to take and use our torch to heat so we can actually isolate our heat exactly where we want it. So then we're going to take our tongs and this is actually work them apart. And this, these are what you call scrolling tongs. Okay. And we'll start just scrolling everything around to where we want it to. Twisted up. Now all we need to like is getting everything sort of cleaned up, smoothed up, okay. as far as getting the outside of the bell finished. We still got a little bit to do on the on our the actual ringing part of it. Sadie wants Sadie to wants clean on the it up. So what we want to do is take our cut brush. We're going to shine everything up just a little bit. Okay. So again. You want to take and hold just like you did on the grinder and just very lightly sort of go over. Okay. It's going to have a little bit of a. A little bit of a sound. A little bit to it. Big deal is let's not hit it very hard. And keep in mind that when this is spinning, see how it spins this right. direction? We want to keep it in such a direction that if it does actually grab hold of this, that it's gonna pull the grinder away from it. Yes. You don't wanna get it over on this side where it's gonna push the grinder in. And it. here is why. Because I know this for a fact, it will come back and grab your t-shirt and go exactly. and wind up in your t-shirt and leave this giant groove across your belly. Cause I have a big scar from this across my stomach where it does a crunch across my stomach. We've got, we've got the outside of the bell made. Uh -huh. So we've got our little holder inside. So all we need to make is the dinger part of the amp, of the uh, bell. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna, remember how we did the little offset blows? Yes, on the, yes, uh, yes, here. On the, yep, on the main part of it. So we're gonna start that again. And we're gonna do a little offset blow and we're gonna turn this little part into the part that actually hangs on. And it just kinda of hangs in there. It just kinda of hangs in here. We'll take and upset this just a little bit to make a ball out of it. Okay. So we gotta start with another little piece of half inch round bar. We're gonna do a little bit of hot offset blows to get the, the hanger part of it. Okay. And then we're gonna leave a little isolated part on the end. And that's what's gonna make the actual Planker part of our bag. Okay. 
you've got this in dinger hand. Dinger hand, dinger part, the clapper. We have the, we have the clapper of the, of the bell hammered, hammered out as far as the, the round part is going to hold on. This is, yeah, this is our little hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off at about a half inch here. So Just we're going to gonna use our, our hot cut in our, in our hardy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this hot one more time. We're gonna bring it right over here. And we're gonna hold about it. a half inch right there, and we're gonna smack right down on the top of it. Then we're gonna we're gonna do about two or three blows this way, then we'll rotate it, do two or three blows, rotate it, and then we'll just take it all the way off. All right, there you go. You so, can hold right there on the end. Half an inch. About a half inch, take it back to you, about yep. a little bit more, there. about right into there. there you go. Right on top of it. No, right on top of your, there you go. There you go. Now, one quarter turn. You always want to keep part of that groove on that hot cut. But hey, keep there you go. Up. There you go. We're going to pull it back in. I'm just going to make it look real easy. Because he's a professional. But making a ball out of it. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, there we go. We've got our little hook you, going. You put yeah, your hook on it just like we did and on the steel earlier. Then we just hang it in the belt. Yeah. We're going to quench this down. Yep, there you go. Where's our bell? Here's your bell. Okay. You made. Now put your dinger inside your bell. Your clapper, whatever you want to call it. I'm going for the dinger. dinger. I'll, I'll we call it dinger forever. There we go, now we have a bell. Now when I ring this, are you going to come? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be louder to get you to come when I ring it. The drum probably can't even hear it. No. A little bit. A little bit. That little is bit. beautiful. Isn't that fun? It is. Okay, so y'all have seen how we have taken this piece of rusty pitted crap pipe and turned it into this bell tonight. And uh, I'd like to thank Claudia, who's here on behalf of Track. Thank you for having me. And, uh, it was fun. Thank you. Well, we appreciate Track for all they've done for us and the blacksmithing classes thank and you. everything they've done done to help us out. Please, please subscribe. Y'all could really help us out by subscribing to the channel below. And uh, be sure to like and share all of our posts on Facebook. Anyway, we will see y'all in February on the second Tuesday for our next episode. Stay tuned and we'll see y'all soon. Thanks.